Welcome to the Photography BB Photoshop Action Tutorial for our brand new 3D Motion Photo Photoshop Action. I created this action for two reasons. The first is I've always been fascinated at how far we can push Photoshop to do things to our images and create something completely different than what we started with. The second is I've always been interested in digital art and seeing what we can do to create new art effects. Now I'm always challenged with how we can come up with new effects uh, to turn photographs into pieces of digital art, but I thought this time we would go with something a lot different and see if we could turn a static image into a living image, something that could be used on photographs and pieces of digital artwork that you've already created. So that's what I set out to do with our 3D motion photo Photoshop action, and now I'll show you how to use it. So the first step is to install the action into Photoshop. And the best way to do that is to go into the menu window, actions. And when the actions panel appears here, we're just going to go to the top corner menu here, the little fly out menu and go down to load actions. And then you will just navigate on your computer to where you downloaded and extracted or unzipped the 3D motion photo Photoshop action. So you'll have a folder like this and you'll see two different versions. You'll see a CC version and a Photoshop CS6 version. So select the action version for the version of Photoshop that you are using and we'll jump in. I'm using Photoshop CC, open that folder, choose the action itself and then click open. Now I've already installed it into Photoshop. So I'm just going to click cancel. And once you have installed it, it will appear in the actions panel, usually at the bottom of the actions panel, uh, but I've installed it right here. I have the two versions, the CC version and the CS6 version. Now, when you toggle open the 3D motion photo, uh, 3D motion photo action folder, you're going to see a very long list of Photoshop actions. These are all actions that are included in this particular effect. Now it may look overwhelming at first, but I promise you it's extremely easy to use. I'm going to walk you through how to do that and you'll be creating your motion photos in no time with this. So I've organized the actions into different sections. So you'll see I have a step one section and that is for selecting your main subject. In the Photoshop CC version, we have two options for that. We have an auto select subject where Photoshop will automatically detect and select your subject for you. Or we have a manual subject selection because in some cases, the auto subject detection doesn't work as perfectly as we would like it. Or if you have a very complicated background, you may need to make your subject selection manually. So you do have these two options. In the Photoshop CS6 version, I'm just going to jump over to that really quickly here. There is no auto detection uh, available with CS6. So it's only the manual subject selection. So we've just included that one step one action right there to manually select the subject. I'm going to jump back to the CC version. So again, we have step one subject selection. We have two options for that auto select or manual select. Once we've done that, we move to step two. And that is the main subject motion options, the zooming options. So we have a number of different options here and they are organized by the amount of zoom. So we have 110% and we have different areas of where we're zooming that image from. So we can zoom it in from the center, zoom it in from the top left corner, from the top, the top right and so on. So we have different angles or different areas where we can start the zooming from. Uh, so again, we have 110%. The next level up is 115%, which zooms it uh, even more. Uh, the next one, 125%. And we cap it at 150% because when we're zooming things from a static image, anything more than 150%, it just becomes a little bit too much. I actually like to stay in the 110, 115, and I'll sometimes go up to the 125. Uh, we'll have a look at how to do that in just a moment. Now you might have noticed at the bottom of each section of uh, these levels of zoom, we have a reverse zoom in and out uh, action here. So these are all zooming in actions on the main subject. But if you would prefer to flip that around and have your subject zoom out instead of zooming in, you can simply run this action after you've run the zoom in action and it'll change the zooming in into a zooming out effect. It just reverses that. 
So once you've completed step two, so you would first start with step one, selecting your subject, you would move on to step two, choosing any just one of these zooming actions. That'll zoom your main subject. You can decide if you want to flip it around, zoom it in or out. Then you would move to step three, where you can now zoom your background. Now you'll notice the uh, subject are all zoom in actions and the background are all zoom out actions. We have the same levels, 110, 115, 125, and 150. And again, they are uh, the inverse. Instead of zooming in, we are zooming out. You also have the different directional options for those. Uh, and I've created it this way because the parallax uh, sort of 3D effect works best if your subject is zooming in the opposite direction from your background. So I've just done it this way for convenience, but you can, of course, flip that around and change the zoom out to a zoom in, or the same thing for the subject, zoom in to zoom out, uh, and that's up to you. So once you've done your subject zooming, your background zooming for step three, you would just move on to step four, which is exporting your final uh, piece of art. And you can save your artwork, there's two options. You can save it as a video file, so this is especially useful if you're going to be creating a slideshow where you want to have these moving images as part of a slideshow. Uh, or you can save it as an animated uh, GIF or GIF file, uh, which you would use on the web if you're sharing your image on social media or on your website. Uh, that's where that would be useful. So two different options for saving. And of course, you can save it in both formats as well. So you will be prompted as you use this action to move throughout the steps. So you'll never forget what comes next. And let's have a look at how to do that. So I'm going to use this image here. Maybe I'll just slide the actions panel. Here we go. So let's start at step one and select the main subject. I'll show you the auto selection feature from Photoshop CC. We're gonna select option one, auto select subject and just click play. And that will automatically create a selection of the subject. So I'm going to click uh, we are given this prompt here. It says next choose one of the zoom animation options below for the main subject. So again, not the background, but we'll be choosing a zoom option for the main subject. So click continue and then choose a zoom option in step two. So very easy. You would just click continue and then choose one of these step two options right here. Uh, so this is what the auto subject detection has done. It's done a great job of, uh, I'll just turn off that mask right here and you can see it's automatically detected our main subject very nicely. Uh, Photoshop tends to do a really good job on this, but again, if the background is complicated, you may want to do a manual subject selection. So what I'll do is I'm going to delete this layer right here, and I'll show you how the manual subject selection works and my preferred method for selecting a subject. So I'm going to select option two this time, click play for that action. And now I'm prompted, it says next, paint on the main focus area layer to create a precise selection of your main subject. That's very important. You do want a very precise selection. Uh, it's also important that when you're using this method to be sure that the brush tool opacity and flow are both set to 100% to avoid any errors in the action. So that is at the top of the screen here. You'll see my brush opacity is 100%. The flow is also 100%. That's very important. Uh, after you have masked your main subject on the main focus area layer, choose any of the step two zoom actions below to animate your main subject. So instead of doing the automatic subject selection, we're gonna manually select this subject here. I'll click continue. And you can paint, the brush tool is automatically selected for you. You can paint to select your main subject and you would probably wanna spend some time doing that very carefully. You can see it could be a little bit tedious and you basically paint over your entire main subject in this way. Um, I don't recommend this method myself. I'll show you what I do. I'm just gonna undo that. So instead of painting on the main focus area layer, which is what we were prompted to do, I'm gonna create a selection and then fill my selection with that foreground color. So the way I do that is I'm going to select the background layer because this is the only layer that has the main subject pixels on it right now. And I'm going to use the uh, selection tool right here, the quick selection tool. So I'm gonna click on that and then you can increase the size of this using the square bracket keys. So you'll notice 
just on the back of his head here. I can make it smaller or bigger. And basically, I'm just going to click over the main subject. And you can see Photoshop does a very good job of selecting what I'm brushing on. I'm going to brush that over my main subject here. And I'm purposely going to select something a little extra just so you can see how to deal with it. So now in this corner here, you can see I've selected some of the waterfall. Now I actually don't want that to be part of my main subject. So I can hold down the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac. And while I'm holding down that key, I can brush over that area to remove that. Now I've removed a little bit too much. You can see I've removed into some of the jacket here. So I can release the Alt or Option key and just click inside the jacket to add that back in. And that looks great. So now I have the subject selected. I need to fill that on the main focus area layer so that I am masking the subject on the main focus area layer. So click this layer to make it active and then simply press Shift Delete and choose foreground color and click OK and that masks our subject the same way that the auto selection did. Of course, the auto selection was much faster and easier to use, but again, it doesn't always work perfectly on every image. So that's why we have two options. So as we were prompted before, once we've created the selection, we're gonna move on to step two and choose one of the zoom options for our main subject. Now, because the subject, if you look at the thumbnail here, is located in the corner of the image, I actually like to zoom it this way. So from the top left, I guess, of the subject downwards this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use 115% zoom and I'm going to choose zoom in from the top left. So basically from the top left of the selection, which will be around here, it's going to zoom it this way and towards the, to, towards the viewer. So we'll click this one and click play and this just takes a moment to run here okay now that is complete and it says next choose one of the zoom animation options below for the image background so we've done the main subject now we're going to move on to the background so here's a tip use an opposite zoom direction for your subject zoom from your subject zoom. For example, if your main subject is zoom in, then choose a zoom out option for your background. Click continue to proceed to step three background options. So we're gonna click continue, and then we'll just scroll down to step three and choose any of the background options. I used 115% before. I could use any of the uh, other zoom ratios that I would like to but I'm going to stick with 115 again. Actually, no, I'm gonna zoom the background a little slower than the foreground. So I'll use 110 instead of 115. And again, it typically works well if you're using opposites. Um, not every time, but it just, the parallax effect works really well when opposites are used. So I did top left last time. So the opposite of top left is bottom right. So I'm going to choose zoom out from the bottom right and I'm using 110%. I'm going to click play to run that. Okay, it now says your animation is now ready to be exported. From step four export options, choose to export your animation as either a video file or an animated GIF or GIF file. Click continue to proceed. So I can move on to step four right now and save it as a video or an animated image file. But you might want to see how does it look first. And the way to do that is to open the timeline panel. So we can go to window and then go down to timeline. And you'll be presented with the animation timeline right here. Now it's going to be a little bit difficult to see, but if you drag this blue timeline right here, you'll be able to see the animation. So I'm going to just drag this down out of view a little bit. So it's not covering the whole image. And all I want to do is drag this handle throughout the image to see how does my zoom look. So you can see I'm zooming in on the main subject. The main subject is getting closer to us. And I'm zooming out on the background as well from the bottom left corner. Now I may want to reverse that zoom on the background. So I'm gonna open up the actions panel again. 
And I'm going to go back to the uh, 110 zoom out, is what we used before. I'm going to reverse the zoom out to a zoom in. So I click on this and I click play. And that's just going to change it. And once again, I can drag the handle. And now I can see how did that affect it. Now that I really like. That's more dramatic than what it was before. So you can see how that static image has now been brought to life and it's very 3D looking. It's almost like a camera's panning in. So very cool. So if I'm happy with that, I can move on to exporting the image by using one of the options below. So I will click save as a video file. I'm gonna click play. And here's the output box here. Now everything has been pre-selected for you. However, you can change the preset that Photoshop has built in from high quality to any of these options here. Um, however, high quality will keep the aspect ratio of your photo exactly as your main image was. So I like to use it like that. Uh, all you have to do is select a path to save your file. You can change the file name if you would like and click render and that will render out the video animation for you. So that's a very uh, quick and easy way to create these 3D animated image effects. Again, it works really well on photographs and it actually works very well on digital artwork as well. So I hope you have a lot of fun playing with these uh, and enjoy this new effect from Photography BB Artistry Actions. Thank you again and have a wonderful day. Happy Photoshopping.